the Atari.io button is here because today is the 26th of the month and every 26th of the month they celebrate Atari Day and today we're going to celebrate by reviewing a game that the four members voted on and that game is Pole Position for your Atari 2600 featuring box art where the driver is way too preoccupied with his front right tire and out of the exhaust comes geometric shapes very interesting Something else that's interesting is some of the label variations that they made when they released this game, including one misspelling. That's right, Pole Positin. So let's go ahead and take Pole Positin, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Pole Position was published by Atari and carries a copyright year of 1983. It is based on the popular 1982 Namco arcade game that was brought to America in the arcades by Atari themselves. Pole Position was programmed by Doug McRae, who also programmed the 2600 version of Dig Dug, which I reviewed in episode 189. Pole Position is a racing game for one player only and only has one standard mode of difficulty. The game consists of two races. You start with a qualifying lap. If you're able to complete the lap in 73 seconds or less, you will qualify for the Grand Prix race. In the Grand Prix race, you can race up to four laps. However, doing so can be very difficult since the timer doesn't allow for many mistakes, but you can earn extra time every time you successfully complete a lap in time. To control your car, you move left or right on the joystick to steer, up to shift into low gear, down to shift into high gear, and press the button to brake. Your car automatically accelerates when the game starts, however you must be in high gear to reach your maximum speed and driving on the corners will cause you to slow down. There are also several cars during the game that you have to avoid as the simplest touch will cause an explosion. I'm guessing these cars you're racing must be Ford Pentos. Crashing doesn't end your game but it does cost you valuable time. Scoring wise you can get a passing bonus of 50 points for every car you pass. A timer bonus of 200 points for every second left on the timer once you complete all four laps of the Grand Prix, as well as 200 to 4,000 points depending on how quickly you successfully complete the qualifying course. According to the manual, you gain the lead pole position by finishing the qualifying course in 58 and a half seconds or less. However, no matter how quickly you successfully complete the qualifying lap, you will always start the Grand Prix at the starting line by yourself. Graphically speaking, the game looks pretty solid, with a few minor drawbacks. There are no billboards in the game, nor is there a finish line or a map as you drive as there are with several other versions of this game. Also, your opponents all look like yellow rectangles in the distance that transform into large yellow razor blades and then cars as you get closer. However, I really like the background and you yourself look really good. I also thought that the racetrack itself moved very smoothly during gameplay. Sound and music wise, I thought everything was very well done. There's a nice opening theme at the beginning and the race sounds themselves from the engine humming to the tires squealing fit the game very well. And naturally, this is a family friendly game. At the time I researched on eBay, loose copies were going for six to seven dollars, complete copies were going for 10 to 11, new copies were going for 10 to 17 dollars, and misspelled loose copies that say pole position at the end label were going for 17 to 18 dollars a piece, and those prices include shipping. So what did I think of pole position? Despite the fact that it is only a single track and that I really wish there was at least a finish line, I really enjoyed my time with the game. I thought the challenge was just right. The fact that some cars stayed pretty stationary while others consistently moved back and forth really kept me on my toes. And I thought the controls also fit well for a racing game with steering that was touchy but not too touchy. Overall this is a solid racer on the 2600. So where am I going to rank pole position? Somewhat high. I do like it more than Stargate at 15 but I would rather play another round of Joust at 14. So out of the 89 games I've now ranked on the 2600, Pole Position is racing into the 15th position. Pole Position is highly recommended for Atari 2600 racing fans. So what do you think of Pole Position on the 2600? Whether you agree or disagree with me, you can feel free to let me know in the comments below. At this time, I'd like to give a special thank you to all the members at the Atari.io forums who voted on which game I should review today. I'd really appreciate it if you would click the like and subscribe buttons. I'd also appreciate it if you decided to support the show on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash gamer for more information. You can also follow me on both the Facebook or the Twitter. And I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. You can find more retro podcasts and videos at theretrojunkies.com. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and have a happy Atari day, everyone.